Good morning. Welcome back. We're going to read Hopper Hunts for Spring by Marcus Palfer. Wake up, Hopper, said his mama. The snow is beginning to melt. Spring is coming at last. Oh, great, said Hopper excitedly. Someone new to play with. I'm I'll go and meet him. Before his mother could explain that Spring wasn't a person, Hopper was bouncing away across the thin carpet of snow. The snow had started to melt, and the blades of grass were pushing through it, reaching for the sun in one place where the snow had completely melted. Hopper found a hole next to a heap of earth. Hello! Is anyone at home? Maybe this is where Spring lives, thought Hopper, squeezing himself into the hole. Inside the dark tunnel slopes down into the earth. Hopper crept slowly down in the tunnel. He couldn't see anything in the dark. Then he bumped into something soft. Hello, said Hopper. You must be Spring. What are you doing in this tunnel? Spring? Me? said the voice. No, I'm a mole, and this is my tunnel. What are you doing here? I'm looking for Spring. I don't know where Spring lives. I don't know where Spring lives, said the mole as they crawled out into the open air. But his home must be larger than this. Try the big cave on the other side of the forest. Goodbye, Mole, and thank you, said Hopper, scampering eagerly away. Hopper found the cave. He peered nervously inside. Near the back was something big and brown. What could it be? Wake up, Spring! It's me, Hopper. Mama and I are waiting for you. What could it be? Is it Spring? Why must I wake up? Growling the deep voice. Is winter over? Anyway, I'm not Spring my little friend. Why not? Well, because I'm a bear. Why are you sleeping in this cave? asked Hopper. I've always slept here in the winter. When the first snow falls, I crawl inside and don't wake up until spring comes. Hopper thought for a minute, and then he said, My mama says spring is coming today. Do you know where he lives? I want to go and meet him. The bear ambled up to the mouth of the cave and sniffed the air. You're right. It does smell of spring. And if I'm not mistaken, the smell is coming from up there in that tree. Perhaps that's where spring lives. Spring lives in a tree? Let's see. They ran over to the tree. Wait here, said the bear. I'll take a look. The bear climbed nimbly into the branches, and when he put one paw into the hole of the trunk, Honey, he said, smacking his lips. The perfect breakfast. I'm hungry after that long sleep. Spring doesn't seem to live here, though. The bear climbed down. Meanwhile, Hopper had started to feel hungry, too. They sat down together and licked the delicious honey from the bear's paw. I'm not going to look for spring anymore, signed Hopper. I'm too tired. We'll just have to wait until he comes. Oh. 
I'll take you home, said the bear kindly. I need to stretch my legs. They're stiff from the whole winter's sleep. Come on, little one, climb onto my back and make yourself comfortable. So Hopper climbs on top of the bear's back. Night was falling when they found Mama Hare. There you are, Hopper, she said. I was getting worried. I didn't find Spring, Mama. He wasn't in the hole in the ground or in the bear's cave or in the hollow of the tree. I don't know where he's hiding. But Harper, you can't go out and meet Spring, said his mama softly. Spring isn't an animal. It's just the time of year when the air gets warmer and the snow melts and the flowers start to bloom. Oh, said Harper, disappointed. Don't be sad. You did find a new friend said his mother. Hopper crept closer to Mama and waved goodbye to Bear. Come back soon, he called after him. We can play together all through the spring. The end. I hope you enjoy the story. Hopper Hunts for Spring by Marcus Bassett.